In this video we're going to show how to turn a Jupyter Notebook into an orchestrated machine learning application with the help of Airflow. So the first thing I'm going to do is log into the Hopsworks um, front page using the default password admin and now I'm going to work with a project that I created called Logical Cox and inside this project I've uploaded the uh, MNIST Keras example covered in an earlier video. So let's go into the Logical Clocks folder. Let's look and see where that MNIST um, Jupyter Notebook is. It's in the Jupyter folder here, or dataset. We can see it's here at Keras, mnist.ipynb. Now the way we run Jupyter Notebooks as jobs is that we need to create a job from this Jupyter Notebook. So in the top left-hand corner, you can see there's a service called Jobs here. I'm going to go to that job service and in here I'm going to create a new job. So we're going to go click on new job and then we're going to enter the job's details. So the job name will be mnist keras and the type will be spark and then I need to select a, a file to run as a job. So I can run a Scala jar file, um, a Java jar file, uh, a PySpark um, job, so as a Python file, or an IPython notebook. So typically people who use this jobs API might use the REST API instead of going through the UI as I'm doing right now. <coughs> but what we can do here is we can select our IPython notebook as a Jupyter. It's in the Jupyter dataset. This is this MNIST IPYNB and we select it. The notebook does not take any arguments, so we don't need to do that. You can supply them. And what we'll do is we'll skip the advanced mode here. So what we'll do is we'll just run, I'll just give it a little bit more driver memory and I'll give it one GPU. And I've selected the experiment option. It's a, the simple model we used to, to train this particular M, uh, MNIST application. You could select any of the other options. And I'm just gonna create that job. So when we create the job, what we can see is the job has a name we can see that we can delete the job over here. We can view the user interface to the job as it's running. And what I'll do just to get started is just run this job to show you that it can be run from here. This screen that pops up is basically saying, well, the current price is 1x the normal price. This is like Uber uh, pricing where as the load on the cluster increases, the price can, can be increased. And basically that means that we can uh, re reduce your CPU, CPU um, so if we go to settings we'll see here in settings you have something called a, a CPU budget <clears throat> so when that runs out uh, you're not able to run jobs anymore so we want to incentivize people to to run jobs when the cluster is not busy okay so this job has started running we can see its state is accepted and it should so soon transition to running which it has and what we'll do now is just look at it as it's running. It runs very quickly, I believe. So we better get in here quickly. We we'll click on the blue button. <coughs> We're in the Spark user interface. So now we'll go to the executors tab. Uh, there's a tensor board up and running, you can see as well. And you can see it's active and running. And we can see in the bottom left hand corner of the screen that the GPU has been allocated and the job is running. So we can examine the logs here as before using the, uh, the executor logs to see what's happening. We've got no logs, so that means probably the job is, is close to finishing or has finished. So let's go back to the jobs UI here, and we can see, in fact, it has finished. So what will happen is that the Spark user interface that we went to there becomes temporarily unavailable when, between when the job finishes and when the job is available in the Spark um, history server. And the logs that we tried to access here are no longer available because our Spark application is no longer running and it's not available in Yarn anymore because what has happened is that the logs have actually been aggregated and copied into the datasets logs dataset here. So that's this one here. So when your job's finished running, your, your logs will end up in here. We can go in here and it's we're going to look at Spark. I'm going to order them by most recent. So we get the most recent application. And I can look at these, the output of these different logs from here. 
directly. So this was training our, our MNIST model. It only took 14 seconds. It was pretty quick. So now that I have um, turned my notebook into a job and the job has a name, it's Keras MNIST, I can run it as part of an Airflow workflow. <coughs> so I'm going to go to Airflow here. And this is Airflow. Um, you can press the open button to open Airflow. And it will open Airflow in a new tab. You may need to approve it. There's no DAGs here currently. Let's close it again. And I'm going to upload um, an Airflow file. It will upload it, in fact, not to HDFS, but to the local file system. We haven't added support for HDFS to Airflow as of yet. And I'm going to launch a very sim simple DAG called Launch One Job. Typically, Airflow jobs will be orchestrations or chains of jobs. This is just to show us getting started. So I've uploaded that particular DAG. It's a Python program, and we can actually edit it in place. Let's have a look at it. So for this particular DAG, if we go through it, we can see that it looks at the project name. I need to set that. That's correct. The DAG owner is my username, and that username can be found. I'll just show you where you can find it. You can find it up here in the account information. And um, it's this username here. So let's go back and edit it. So the project name is correct. The username is OK. The job name is Emnis Karras. That's a name I entered already. And this is pure Airflow code. What we've done is created a new uh, operator for running these Hopsworks jobs called the Hopsworks Launch Operator. And another operator here called Jobs Success Sensor. <laughs> because often you want to j run jobs in parallel. Running a job is not a blocking operation. So when you want to wait for a job to finish, you use this Hopsworks job success sensor to indicate that when this job is finished, we can go to the next stage in our orchestration. So in this particular case, uh, the job will look like this. We'll have our, uh, we'll call it job. It's the MNIST Keras job. It will run first, and then we'll have this sensor which will wait for that job to finish. When that job is finished, then the the workflow will be finished. So we can see that at the bottom, it's written in code using just this line here. Basically, task zero, which is the one above here. Oops. Task zero here. Uh, that will run first, and then the uh, <coughs> two uh, directional arrows means that the next uh, job to run in the in the orchestration is the sensor and this sensor will just block and wait for job name zero which is the first job to, to complete so let's just save that i don't think we have to do any more changes to it and if we open airflow it's going to actually refresh airflow and that's how you upload files to airflow you can see that this um job launcher DAG has, has been uploaded here. We can turn it on by pressing this on button. You can um, run it, but we don't actually need to run it directly because if we go back and look in the, in the job definition at the beginning, what it does here is that it basically sets the current time now and delta to time to 10 minutes ago, and that will cause this job to be executed and launched because it's gonna, inter it's gonna run at once the beginning and you can set different intervals for how often you want to run jobs um, manually in that program so what we can do now is we can go into the DAG here and have a look at it and we can see that we have this green state here running and we can see that running MNIST carrot so it's currently running so if we go back to the job here we can see that it's actually running so Airflow kicked off this job running. We can see down here that the GP is being used and the, the job will finish relatively quickly. So it's finishing right now. And if we go back to Airflow and go back here, we see that state is uh, it's running and it's just completed. So success is the state of the job or this particular DAG. And if we click into it, we can visualize the DAG. We had just these two stages running MNIST Keras and then waiting for it to complete. 
you can look at the code, you can look at logs. Uh, and this is a brief overview of running Airflow uh, notebooks as jobs in, in, in Hopsworks and then orchestrating them into pipelines. Thank you.